Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. My name's Carolyn Allen, and I'm the nursing cast director based at the American Association of Colleges of Nursing in Washington, DC. And I'd also like to introduce my colleague who will be speaking a little bit later on, uh, Dr. Hilda Mejia Abreu. She is the executive director of program partnerships at Liaison International. And she's also a former associate dean of admissions and student services at the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio. So today we'd like to talk to you about nursing casts, how to navigate the application, and then also how to um, prepare to apply. So um, I want to say it's great to be talking with students. I used to work in college admissions, so it's nice to uh, interact with students again, especially at the, the uh, fair and the exhibiting to be able to talk with all of you. Uh, you had great questions. And we're excited to hear your questions in this section. And I'm thrilled that all of you are either pursuing nursing already or thinking about nursing as a career path. So I just, before we get started on the application, I just want to say that you're in good company. There's a lot of nurses. It's actually the largest healthcare profession uh, with over 3.1 million providers. So there's a lot of other <laughs> nurses out there, uh, and eventually you'll be out in the field working. And one of the great things about nursing is the variety of options that you have. So you're probably aware, but there's a lot of great opportunities to work in different environments. So you could work at a hospital, you could work in a school, you could work in a private practice. And what you do as a nurse is so important for the healthcare system. You really impact patients and quality of care. So you're really pursuing a, a challenging and rewarding career. There's also a lot of opportunities to advance your education. So you can go on after your basic preparation and get a master's degree or a doctoral de degree, and you can focus on different specialty areas. So maybe you want to work with labor and de delivery and you want to do nurse midwifery, or perhaps you want to be a nurse practitioner and work with families. There's so many options for you that you will never be bored with nursing, that's for sure. Uh, a lot of exciting career opportunities for you and lots of ways to advance your education. You could even go on to get a doctoral degree and become a doctor of nursing practice or get your PhD and teach because we definitely need more faculty. And it's also um, not only a rewarding career, but well-paid. So that's really important when you think about all the time and money that you're putting in your education. You want to make sure that um, you're getting a good return on your investment. And you can see that um, nurses have pretty good salaries, which is important. So I mentioned that I'm from the American Association of Colleges of Nursing. And let's just call it AACN to, because it's a very long name. So what is AACN? We are the National Membership Organization for Nursing Schools. So we have over 750 nursing schools that are part of our organization. And we have lots of different project areas for the association. So we work with deans and faculty. We accredit programs. We set curriculum standards. Um, and one of the important things that we do is nursing CAST, the centralized application service for nursing. And at AACN, um, we don't have the in-house capability to build a sophisticated software product like Nursing Cast, so we partner with a company called Liaison International that has a lot of experience in the industry. Um, you might be, or you might have friends that are applying to dental school, vet school, uh, PA school, and they're probably applying through a centralized system, and the technology that runs those system is provided by Liaison, so they have a lot of experience in the industry. and. So we partner with participating schools. What we do is any school that wants to participate in nursing cast, we collect their admissions requirements. So we need to know, you know, what are the programs that they offer? What's the deadline? Uh, when can applicants enter into the program? What are the reference requirements? What are the prerequisite courses required? And that information is all organized and put into an online system called Nursing Cast. So that way you can easily navigate to see, okay, these are the programs that are participating, these are the admissions requirements, and you can fill out one online application to apply to any of those participating schools. So AACN, I mentioned that we mentioned, or I mentioned that we have 750 member institutions and we survey them annually. So we ask them questions like, how many applicants did you get for your BSN program? How many of those applicants were qualified? How many were turned away? 
And in 2013, we found that over 75,000 qualified applicants were turned away, even though 14,000 seats went unfilled. So that's a really, that's a problem nationally. We want to help direct students to open seats. And you can see in California, over 8,000 students um, that were qualified were turned away, even though um, there was some seats available in different programs. So without a centralized system, it's really difficult to direct students to open seats. So that's really our goal with Nursing Cast is we want to direct students to programs with open seats. And how do we do that? So there's a notification system in Nursing Cast where we send out information to you. It goes to your email address and you also have an inbox in Nursing Cast that tells you um, this school just opened up a BSN program at a new site and this is the admissions criteria, this is the deadline, you have the opportunity to apply. And the really helpful thing is, is that you already have your information in the system, so you don't need to you know, enter in first name, last name, my address all over again. It's already there, um, as well as your transcripts and supporting documents. So we want to help direct students to open seats um, and then also notify you about important things that you need to know, like deadline extensions or if there's new programs available in your area or across the country. So let's talk a little bit about the application process. Um, when I was applying to school, we still use paper. Can you believe it? <laughs> so we would actually, you know, if we wanted to apply to a program, fill out a piece of paper, mail that in, fax it, whatever, and then um, the admissions office at the school would have to go through all of that information, organize it into files, and then review it. So then a lot of schools built their own online application or partnered with a software company to get an online application that was specific to their school and program. So we thought, why not do this nationally? Why not have all the nursing programs in the country? Let's try to get them to participate in a centralized system so applicants can, ev can have an even better experience, a more streamlined experience where they're filling out their information once and all of that information is going to any of those programs that they're interested in. And we launched Nursing Cast in March 2010. So some of you may have used the system already. You might have had friends that used it. And we've gotten a lot of great feedback from applicants especially. Whenever you launch a new product or service, um, you know, it's not going to be perfect. And nursing is really complicated. There's a lot of different degrees. Everyone has different requirements. So it's really difficult to get a central or common uh application to work for all of these different schools at all of these different levels. So we wanted to give the schools the ability to customize certain elements. So we are actually launching a new version of the application on October 15th, which is Wednesday. So really soon, we are opening up um, Nursing Cast 3.0. So based on all this great feedback that we've gotten um, from schools, the centralized application service, Nursing Cast, is going to allow for some custom capability. And I'm going to show you some screens of what that looks like. So a school can actually brand their listing on the application. Before it was really text heavy, um, but now a school can go in and they can you know, upload an image that represents our student body or campus, put in text that actually really gives good information to students. Like, what's the admissions criteria? Do you require the T's exam? Um, what's the deadline? All of those details that you want to know, and now you're searching, you're maybe Googling, you're going to different schools' websites, you're talking to academic advisors. It's all there. Um, in one place. So the important thing is that we have two versions of the application. So the old version of Nursing Cast is 2.0 is what we call it. So we want to make sure that if you're using Nursing Cast, you're using the right version. So we have some of the participating programs that are on the old version of the application, Nursing Cast 2.0, and then we have a lot of the programs that are on 3.0. So in order to cut down on applicant confusion, there's a programs list that tells you. So you can click on the link and it will tell you, okay, all of these programs are on the old application and all of these programs are on the new application. So that way you can create your account on the right application. And this is really a temporary uh, workaround that we have in place because we are launching the new version of the application. Um, but moving forward, it's, you know, you, you'll go to one site to fill out your application. So you create an account on Nursing Cast. You can go to nursingcast.org, click on Apply here. You'll see this page, and this is where you can select either the old application, if there's programs in the old application that you want to apply to, or you can pick the new application, if that's where the programs that you're interested in are posting. So there is a, a fee to use the service, and at the undergraduate level, 
um, and for master's entry programs as well for your licensure programs, it is $45 for the first program that you select and then $30 for each additional um, program that you apply to through the system. So when you click on nursingcast.org and you click on uh, apply, you'll get to a page that says welcome to nursingcast. And you can go in, create an account and fill out the fields that you need to, all the required fields. And the first thing that you'll see is a splash page that says, welcome to nursing cast, hi, and your first name and last name. And there's some screens that you can toggle through. And when you click on start your application, the next screen that you'll see is um, a search screen. So you'll actually be able to select some programs initially that you might be interested in learning more about and applying to. So the search criteria in the new application, nursing cast 3.0, what we're looking at some screens from now, is you can search by school, so really it's just an alphabetical listing. And you can search by location, so state, maybe you're lo looking in California, or maybe you wanna move, and you're looking in New York or somewhere else. And then you can search by degree type. And now I think in nursing, one of the things that is confusing to students is that there's so many different degrees available. So, you know, where do you start? Do you wanna do your BSN? Do you wanna do an associate degree? Do you wanna do um, maybe you have a degree in another discipline and you wanna get a second degree in nursing? Um, or maybe you're already in nursing school and you're about to complete your program and you'd like to go on for a master's degree or a um, doctoral degree. So you can search by degree type. So really whatever you're interested in, you can filter the list to see all of the accelerated BSN programs, for example. And if you're looking for graduate level programs and you're really interested in a nurse practitioner track or maybe nurse anesthesia, you can search by track as well. And we're gonna be adding um, to the search page, because as I mentioned, this is a new version of the application that we're launching. So we wanna get more feedback from applicants on the kinds of things that are important to you when you're searching for programs so we can um, further enhance the application. So once you select some programs of interest, you will get to the application homepage, and this is um, really important to kind of understand how it is set up and works. So the application itself is actually divided into four parts. And the first section is personal information, and then you have academic history and supporting information. So those three sections are the centralized elements or the common elements. So let's say you're applying to three different schools, three different BSN programs. Every single one of those schools needs to know who you are. So what's your first name and last name? When were you born? What's your gender? Um, where did you go to school? So those items, that data, you only have to answer those questions once and th uh, that information is reused. So it cuts down on kind of the repetitive process that a lot of you probably experience when you have to go to three different websites to fill out the same information. You do that one time. And then things like references, for example, um, you know, it's you have probably have a hard time thinking there's a lot of thought that goes into who's going to write your reference for school and you don't want to bother them and ask them to send out three different sets of letters so you can request that your references be um, submitted once and you can use them for any of the programs that you apply to same thing with transcripts so if a school that you're applying to requires that you need to send in official transcripts if you send them through nursing cast those transcripts are used for any of the programs that you're applying to so again, just trying to streamline the process for applicants. When I was talking about kind of the evolution of the application, the um, nursing cast as it stood previously, the, the current version of the application or the older version that we launched, um, there really wasn't a customizable element to it. So that was an issue because schools would say things like, well, we really need to ask these extra questions of applicants, but we're not able to do that on the common application because they're only relevant to our program. You know, um, CSU Chico needs to know that you are related to an alumni at their institution, but San Francisco State doesn't care if you're related to a CSU Chico alum. So we needed to give schools the ability to kind of customize certain elements, add custom questions, um, have custom transcript requirements, have applicants see the specific prerequisite courses for that program and for that school. Um, so with the program material section, that is where that information is displayed to applicants and collected. So 
the centralized element is, again, personal information, academic history, and supporting information. And then when you go into program materials, any of those programs that you picked, you're going to see a custom homepage that shows you what the um, school is asking for, what that program is asking for, in addition to the information that you've already completed in the main part of the application. And when you're navigating through the application, if you're on a screen and you're not sure how to get back, you can always hit the um, upper left-hand corner. There's four boxes there, and that will bring you back to the home page. So this is an example of a um, custom page that a school might set up. So you can see this image is unique to the school. There's text that's unique to that school. And there's specific tabs of information that you can toggle to. So there's questions and prerequisites. So this nursing leadership program at George Washington University, they want to ask you some additional questions, and they also want you to identify um, that you've taken some prerequisite courses that they require. So with questions, you can see really this is anything that the school wants to ask. So maybe an essay, a specific essay for that program, and you'd see it displayed right there, and then you could type in your response. And really any questions that you would need to respond to would all be listed right there on the page. And on the school's um, homepage, it would give you information like, um, are there any state restrictions for this program? So if you're applying to an online program, maybe there's some restrictions with that. You would, you know, could learn about that. What's the minimum GPA for this program? Really, is there a test that's required? Really, anything that you need to know, the um, instructions would be on that landing page. And they would also link to more details on their website. So within the supporting information section, I mentioned how references, you can use them for more than one program. Um, also licensure and certification. So if you already have your um, LPN or your registered nurse, you can put that information in once and that would go to any of the schools that you're applying to. Same thing about like your employment history and any certifications that you had, maybe your CNA. You can put that in that main section, that supporting information section, and you only have to type that out once or upload that data once and it's used for all those schools. Also, social security number. Some schools need to collect your social security number because of financial aid reasons or for whatever other reason so that we have a specific field in supporting information that's encrypted so that way you know your data is safe. Um, so that's another thing that to look for because some schools will ask you to put that in that section and you only have to put that in once and again that's a, a protected field. So academic history, that's where you would um, let schools know what colleges you've attended. So they need to know, did you get a bachelor's degree already? Where did you go to school? When did you complete your education? Are you still in high school? And that's where you would report all your academic history. Now, your college transcript requirements will vary by program. So some schools will require official transcripts, meaning that you have to request that they're sent from the issuing institution's registrar's office directly to um, nursing casts for processing, or they might require unofficial transcripts, which the applicant would upload themselves to the system. You could do that, or maybe they don't need any transcripts because you're currently enrolled at the school and they already have them on file. So that's something that varies by program. And then also high school transcript, depending on the school and the program or what level you are at in terms of your education, you might be required to submit your high school transcripts. But we tell you that, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. And then transcript entry. So this is a really important one and something that um, might be different that you haven't experienced with other applications that you've used previously. So this is an example of how the application would just display to you what the school needs. So you selected some programs. You can see they're all listed there, what the school name is, what the deadline is, and it uh, tells you whether or not you need to enter in transcripts, you need to submit transcripts, or if you do not need to send transcripts. So a lot of clear direction um, provided. And then talking about transcript entry, so some schools really, they do a lot of work calculating your GPA. So you can imagine, let's just say for a really competitive BSN program, they could get 800 applications and they need to do a lot of analysis of you know who you are as an applicant. So they're really looking, maybe they have 12 courses that they're reviewing to try to understand um, you know, will this applicant qualify for a program? Will they be successful? So they might be looking for example for human anatomy, um, human physiology, microbiology. 
And I think as an applicant, it's really helpful to have this information. So schools actually list their prerequisites and whether or not they want you to assign a course from your academic history to that specific requirement. So that way it's a lot easier for them when they're doing their calculations uh, for GPA review to be able to tell whether or not you'll be a good candidate for that program. So transcript entry is where you as an applicant, you can see if you look at a school's page, so you can see those tabs, there's a home page, the school is asking questions, there's some documents that they want you to upload in addition, maybe your resume, something like that. And then the prerequisites tab would actually list out all of the courses that they're requiring the applicant to have or looking for the applicant to um, complete. And what's the minimum credit hours? acceptable and what's the minimum grade and is there um, any description or any information that you need to know. So that would all be listed there. And then transcript entry in the academic history section, you are able to um, enter in some of the college uh, coursework that you've taken. And then you can assign that coursework to a specific prerequisite at that school. So I could go in, assign psychology, and um, then the school would see that you have taken a psychology course that meets their requirement and they could determine whether or not um, it does meet their needs for their review. So I went through some screens and I just wanted to show you the application itself. If I can just drag this over to show you what the transcript entry portion actually looks like. Oh, I'm up there. Okay, sorry. And unfortunately, I can't see it, so. I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Hilda, and we can show you the application after she talks a little bit more about her preparation for applying. Hi everyone, how are you? Some minor technical issues, but those are solvable. How are you doing today? Wonderful. Well, let me give you a little bit of background about myself. I have been an associate dean for 24 years of my life, long time. Um, I was at Michigan State for about 11 years, and then I went, and previous to that, at uh, University of Massachusetts at Boston, where I was an admissions officer, and went to the University of Texas Health Science Center where I implemented nursing CAS and I also implemented CAS at Michigan State for veterinary medicine, okay? So I have been in the health for profession for quite a while and I enjoy working with students and I love working with technology and that's when I decided to go to the other side and go and work on this project with my colleague Carolyn Allen and AACN, that loan name, the Association of American Colleges of Nursing, which is organized nursing, right? And I did that because I thought it would be important for applicants to have an easy way to apply for admissions to many schools using one tool. So right now, there are about 150 school, thank you, Carolyn. There are about 150 schools that use nursing cash and the goal is for every school in the nation to use nursing gas so that it can be easier for you. So I'm gonna talk to you about some of the lessons that I have learned in working with students and in working with parents. And I saw a few parents yesterday that said that they would be here today. So this is um, one of the things that Carolyn spoke about how complex it is to apply to nursing school. Will you agree? So we're going to try and make it easy with nursing cast, but also you need to make sure that you research the programs that you're applying to. And what I mean by that 
What does UC Chico require versus a San Francisco State University in terms of your requirements? You will find oftentimes that our school might not require a stats course, but another one requires for the same program, for a BSM program, right? And you're all shaking your head. You also might notice that some schools might require organic chemistry. Others do not. Lucky for those that don't have to take organic chemistry. I did not like organic chemistry. Uh, so you need to make sure that you are really aware of what is required, okay? Deadlines, that is critical. Carolyn spoke about nursing cast and how you can look at that centralized process and look when the program opens, when it closes, and how you receive alerts if the program deadline is coming up and if you're missing some information on the application. To me, that is key. When I was an associate dean, many of the phone calls that I used to receive 24 hours before the deadline, oh my God, I forgot to order my transcript. How long do I have? So planning is so critical. So you have the tools available. Carolyn also created something wonderful at AACN just this year called a directory. That directory includes information on each nursing cast school in the country and the requirements, if they have any additional questions, so visit that website at AACN or at nursingcast.org website and you can see a, a lot of information. You might not even know that you might want to go to a program outside California because they have a wonderful full ride and you don't have to pay tuition, so you might make that decision by doing your research. Now, one of the things that students often do not do is because we don't wanna know if we are not as competitive as those applicants to another school. One of the things that I said to students, what you need to do you need to look at yourself critically. It's almost like stepping out of yourself and looking and saying, what do I need to do to be competitive? And that is painful sometimes. And it's painful sometimes because we're not perfect, right? And there are things that we might need to work on. So before you even apply, evaluate what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses academically, and also as far as personal interaction, because as a nurse, guess what? you're going to be interacting with patients all the time. And I still remember when I had a big surgery about 10 years ago, my nurse at the hospital, I saw her more than my doctor, and she brought me a nice little pillow so that I could be comfortable, I still have it. So nurses have the amazing passion for science, but also the passion to be good communicators and good caretakers, but you have to have that science ability. Now, you need to evaluate yourself and then look at the schools that you're planning to apply and say, how competitive were the classes that they admitted this year, the previous year? And what I mean by that, if you believe that your science GPA is at three point, you did the calculation, it is at three point. And for some reason, school X, the minimum GPA for the class admitted was at 3.5. It's a realistic for you to apply to the school. So you need to do that evaluation. Number two, if the school requires the test of essential academic skill or TEAS, everybody knows about TEAS? Good, because you need to prepare for that because most of us take TEAS into account. Look at how you perform as far as test taking. And if you are a bad test taker like I am, I say practice, practice, practice. Because usually it's not about just knowledge, but also about how well you can take a test and figuring out those strategies. And practicing, timing yourself, and knowing the material will help you. So learn that. Because if a school, I was at University of Texas Health Science Center, and we said if a composite score uh, of 70 or below, that is a student that might be at risk of academic performance. So we are going to set a minimum because we know the students that acquire a 80 or 90, 
will perform in our program because of our curriculum. So look at those programs and what those profiles look like. So you might be wondering, how do I look for this information? Go to their website. Go to their virtual open houses because many schools have it. Go and visit with them, ask them questions. Ultimately, your goal is to be well prepared, right? So as I'm speaking, feel free to ask me any questions if I'm going too fast. My goal is for you to be successful when you apply, when you're using that nursing cast application. Now, one of the things that I implemented when I was an associate dean at Michigan State and IUT was an ambassador's program. And what that meant was that my second semester student and my third semester student were mentors to pre-nursing students. Any pre-nursing student that wanted a mentor could contact us and we would pair that student, that future applicant, with someone that could help. And why do you want to know that? You want to know that because you want to know about the culture of that nursing program. You want to know if you have a chance to survive and thrive in that program. So ask a lot of questions about their curriculum, about their facility, about their clinical, about programs that are aimed at retaining you and graduating you. Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions so far? No questions? So this slide really is talking about culture and goodness of fit. I'll give you an example when there was not really a good fit for me. I went to school in the East Coast in Massachusetts for my undergraduate program. I decided to go to a graduate program in public policy at the same school. And then I went to a program for my PhD in higher education. And one of the things with my MPA program, with the public policy program, I wish I would have spent more time asking questions about what is this going to prepare me to do? And what I discover is that my first experience after my second semester and $12,000 later, that I didn't want to run a political campaign for anyone because it was not fun. But I finished the PhD. I, if I had asked more questions, perhaps I would have selected another journey, right? So that's why you have to ask questions. And then for my PhD, I realized that I really like practice, the practice aspect of research not the theoretical aspect. What I wrote about, probably nobody wants to hear about in my PhD, except for a small segment of the population, veterinary medicine, because they want to know what predicts academic success, which is what I wrote about. So make sure that you ask those questions. Now, one of the things that I talk about in preparing for application, while nursing cast makes it easier, the preparation process is intense. So most schools will require references, right? So one of the things that I would say, if you know the school X, application deadline is December 1st, required to be references, what I would start doing is putting a list together of the references writer that you will request to write on your behalf. Now, no family members, that's not a good idea. And people, they have some type of reputation in terms of the field that you're trying to pursue would be a very good idea. So an advisor, a professor, a person that supervises your research in a lab. And what I would say is, you do not want to limit it. If they require three letters of references, I would say you want to have a list of A reference and B reference. What I mean by that, if you come to me and you say, Hilda, will you please provide me a letter of reference? I was in your uh, leadership class, and I got an A, and I did really well. Here's my resume. This is what I want to do. If I don't remember you, because that might have been in 2005, I will be very honest to say, in all honesty, I don't think that I can give you the best letter of reference. And that's when you say, hmm, let me go to my other list and ask somebody else from that list. 
That way you're not scrambling at the last minute, right? The other question that I would say you want to ask is, will you be able to give me the highest letter of reference? That is a difficult question to ask because we don't like to hear bad news, right? And you know what? It's okay to hear bad news first because it's not going to get any better to delay it, right? So it's best to ask and to hear it. And if they say, no, I can't because I don't remember you, then you go to the next person. So I spoke about goodness of fit. How many of you have taken statistics? Okay. So you know about chi-square of association, right? So it's trying to look at fit and expectations. So as you're looking to nursing school and applying to nursing school, one of the things that both the nursing school and the applicant are doing is looking to see if there's fit. It's almost like a relationship, a partnership, a marriage, right? You wouldn't marry anybody that you don't get along with, right? So it's a marriage. So you need to make sure that number one, you understand the culture and you also want to be respectful. Every time you speak to that admissions officer or that advisor or when you attend the open house, admissions officer have a tendency of writing notes on everything that they observe, we actually should have been epidemiologists because we take notes and we evaluate those notes and we make decisions on those notes. So make sure that you're always respectful. You want to make sure that you have a positive experience and that they have a positive experience with you. I have been on admissions committee meetings where an applicant is so close to being denied and when I have said, wait a minute, and I advocate for that applicant. Sometimes that's our role. And I say, you want this person here, even if it's just unconditional admission, because this is how this person behaves, this is how this person asks questions. So those are things that you need to, you don't know who your advocate is going to be when decisions are being made. Questions? No? So I say apply only if the college is right for you. And you might be saying, well, that is really not good advice. I want to be a nurse by any means necessary. This is what I found out. If you decide to go to a school where you don't have goodness of fit, you might be really wasting time and money. Because when you don't like a program, when you don't embrace the culture, when you don't embrace the curriculum and your classmate and your faculty, that is a recipe for a disaster. More than likely, research tells us that you will leave the program. So make sure that where you go is a fun place, unless you're stubborn like I am. In my PhD program, I knew that the expectations was to do research, where I loved the practical aspect of education. But I decided I'm going to get the best question that is going to keep me engaged so that I don't become frustrated with this PhD where I am the only person that loves practice and everybody loves the abstract, but I selected a question that kept me engaged and that was my focus, to finish because I needed to answer a big question. What predicted success in veterinary school? And that was my passion. So I won't talk about my research because you will be bored to tears here. So now, consider whether to attend full-time or part-time. How many of you have been researching schools and they are telling you you may not attend part-time? Yes. Very few BSN programs allow students to go part-time for a number of reasons. A number of reasons. Number one, we want you to complete that BSN fast. We want you to go back to school for graduate programs, so we need to expedite the process, but also it's a cohort experience. And what we know about cohort experience is that you have better chances of completing the program and having a nice little community that help one another. That happened to me for my PhD program. I moved to Texas in the middle of writing my dissertation and I had two students that would check on me every month. How are you doing? Are you making progress? Because we started as a cohort 
and they wanted me to complete the program. So that is something that you need to look into. But also, if you go part-time to a BSN program, financial aid has some implications. And if you worked before you enter the program, what they calculate as your possible contribution toward your education might disadvantage you in terms of getting a full financial aid package. And we're, and we're talking about federal and state financial aid. Now, how many of you applying to a BSN program or thinking of applying, even if it's two, three years from now, have looked at possible sources of scholarship through the university website where you're thinking of applying? Anyone? Good. This is what I tell applicants. Two years, three years ahead of time is even, is not early enough. Star completing that process. Going to college is very expensive. So you want to make sure that the schools that you're applying to and that you believe you qualify to be admitted, if they have scholarship based on merit or areas that you live or because of your interests, start researching that and looking at ways that you can get your application started on your own. And when it's time to apply, you can apply. There are a lot of scholarship at our table. To, uh, yesterday and today, we had sources of scholarship for students that uh, you can start researching uh, undergraduate and graduate. Now, once admitted, you have done your homework. You know the prerequisites. You're going to complete your application, whether nursing cast or another application. You're going to apply to two or three schools because you want to have the best chances of being admitted, right? So you're not going to be placing all your eggs in one basket, but many baskets, right? So once that process is completed and you're successful, you get a mountain of paperwork from the school. Immunizations and uh, being certified with, uh, for BLS. You name a CPR. All those things you're going to, they're going to be asking you about. So before you even hear about admissions, check their website, check the school website to see what do they require as far as immunization. I couldn't tell you where my immunization records are. I'm sure there's some of you who are much younger than I am probably know exactly what they are, but usually your grandmother or your mother has those records, so start collecting those records. Guess why? If you do not have those records, you will not be able to start the program. So it is good to collect that information before you even begin. Now there's one thing that nursing schools have that some other careers do not have, but medicine and nursing, because you're responsible for the care and well-being of very sick people that can't make decisions for themselves. A criminal background check. And most of you are saying, but I'm only 19, how could I have a criminal you know, background? Well, I think I'm a pretty good human being, and I think I am um, very respectful. Guess what? I was fishing without a license in Montana, and I had not a clue. A woman from another country, I had not a clue that I needed a license. I got a ticket. And believe it or not, that is a crime. So remember, always be thinking about your actions because they have consequences. And that criminal background has to be clear for you to begin nursing school. So start doing some research and thinking, did I do something crazy when I was 17 or 18, okay? Now, those documents are really critical to studying nursing school. And I'll tell you because I used to deal with that all the time, so start doing your research. Grades are important, but they're not everything. And I'm going to tell you, I spoke about grades and academic credentials. There are some schools that do what is called a holistic review. They take grades into account as well as other variables such as communication, community service, knowledge of the profession. Research the school and see which one is a better fit for you. I'm going to leave it right there and ask my colleague, oh, there's Carolyn, and you can ask some questions. There are contact information for us, for nursing cast for the association, for us, and I'm gonna stop right there. 
and you can ask questions, and we will repeat the questions uh, so that everyone can hear the questions. Thank you. Questions? Yes, ma'am. That's a great question. I will answer that yes, that is a valid letter, but one of the things that you might want to research is if that school that you're applying to wants that letter reference, or if they're a nursing cat school, if they want the actual reference that comes as part of those requirements in the nursing cast application. So you want to know what the school requires, whether it's a paper letter or the letter through nursing cast, if they're a nursing cast school. Usually they can upload those letters too. Yeah, so it, I think the important thing to note here, I think really the theme is, is that there's so, everything varies. So, you know, one school might take a letter um, from the clinic, whereas another school might say, no, we really want an academic reference. So with nursing cast, we encourage schools and really request that on their program homepage, on that landing page, they write who's an acceptable reference um, so that way you can see, okay, yep, I need one from um, a professor and someone that's worked with me um, at a volunteer activity kind of thing. Excellent question. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Question, when sending transcript, is there an actual address? Yes, very important question. So um, one of the things that I didn't mention that's very important to know is that um, there's an applicant support team at Nursing Cast, and they, um, the operations for Nursing Cast are located outside of Boston, Massachusetts, and that's actually where all, there's an entire team of people that's dedicated to opening the mail. So we tell you, first of all, does the program that you're applying to require official transcripts? And if so, you know, where do they, where do they, uh, where are they sent to? And we actually have an address. And when you put in the college that you um, are attending, you actually, uh, a PDF generates within nursing cast that you can give to your registrar called a transcript request form. And it has the address right there. Um, yeah. And then if a school wants unofficial transcripts, then you can upload them, the, upload them yourself to the system like you would with a resume or something. Good Excellent question. Excellent question. Any other questions? I think I, yes, ma'am. Unfortunately, so if you're applying to uh, nursing programs this year and you're applying, uh, you have the schools that you're applying to that are listed on the old application, Nursing Cast 2.0, and the new application, Nursing Cast 3.0. Unfortunately, yes, you actually do have to create two separate accounts. Um, there's close to 90,000 applicant records in the system currently. We have a lot of students that use it nationally, and it's really hard um, to transfer all of that data over in an efficient method. So we are starting from scratch with the new, the new platform. So, yes. Good question. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yes, ma'am, right here. Good question. So um, how will you know whether or not a school is on Nursing Cast 2.0 or Nursing Cast 3.0? We're trying to really um, make this easy for students because I realize that this is confusing um, and we want to cut down on, you know, schools, applicants not knowing where to go. So when you go to nursingcast.org and you click on apply here, you're going to see a screen and there's two boxes and it will say 2.0 or 3.0 and different images. And there's a box that will say your programs list and you can click on that and look at the schools and the programs and the term of entry and deadline so you can determine whether or not you should be creating your account on Nursing Cast 2.0 or Nursing Cast 3.0. And we are shutting down the old application for good. It will be closed down permanently on February 15th. We're keeping it open for now because some schools um, have a really long admission cycle, so they need to have, um, they need to keep programs on the old application because they opened it up in January of this year, for example. So, other questions? Great, okay, great questions. Thank you for being here. 
we need to wrap up because we have another event coming here, but we're available to you. I will be available to you if you have further questions. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you.